Yes. So uh, that 25 megahertz of the initial frequency band that we had, is it divided in, is it given to one BTH? Um, no. So um, that will be governed by whatever reuse pattern you choose to use. So uh, remember that um, um, cellular networks are designed with a certain reuse factor, which, uh, which corresponds to a reuse pattern. Uh, and that's that's what divide, that's what decides how much how, how much frequency band is allocated to each cell. So it could be uh, I don't know if there's a special one that GSM always uses. In fact, I'd be surprised if there is. But it could be any valid one, like uh, four or seven or thirteen or anything like that. So what, the amount of uh, bandwidth that would be allocated to each cell would be simply uh, the total twenty-five. Or actually, it's it's probably better to think of it in terms of channels. The number of channels allocated to each. BTS would be uh, the total number of channels, for instance, 124 in GSM 900, divided by uh, divided by the reuse factors. For seven, it would be 124 divided by seven, which would be one. I think that's 16, actually. So how do we get the reuse factor? Uh, it's given. Network and switching subsystem. So the network and switching subsystem is really what makes GSM a system. It's kind of a part of GSM. So this consists of three uh, significant uh, components. We first, we have the mobile services switching center. BSCs act locally as routers, so if you if you do a handoff between one cell under this guy's control and another one, uh, the BSC will handle it. But if you go from one one area to another, that has to go through the MSC. So those are like higher level routers. Um, they can also connect to the outside world. Uh, they can connect to the usual telephone network, the PSTN connect to data services like ISDN and so on. And the MSCs that connect to the outside world are called gateway MSCs. Um, another component at this level, the home location register. That's the master customer database, or master subscriber database. That basically contains information such as uh, who you are, your SIM card, uh, various technical details. But significantly, it also it also records where you are in the network at any given time. is the visitor location register. And there is one of these per MSC. And it copies the home location register's info. 
users attached to that MSC. So the home location register is the global database. If you're connected to a particular MSC, the visitor location register grabs that information and keeps a local copy for the purposes of that MSC. Now, does this sort of remind you of anything? Or like foreign agent. Or home agent and foreign agent, right? So it's the same kind of same kind of idea. Compare home agent, foreign agent. So our master diagram would look kind of like this. So here is the master figure, figure four of a GSM system. So we've got our base station subsystems. This is where the cells sit. station subsystems and these MSCs will connect to each other. Each MSC gets a visitor location register. And somewhere out there is an MSC that's actually connected to the home location register. So uh, in that sense uh, equally, in that sense, the MSC acts as a router. So it's uh, basically the MSCs form the back the backbone of the uh, of the GSM network. Somewhere out here, there will also be a gateway MSC. That will connect to the public switch telephone network. Uh, things like ISDN, possibly even. So that's GSM architecture. Any questions on that? OK, I was hoping to talk a little bit about um, uh, cellular data services. Unfortunately, I think I've run out of time for that. Um, so we're going to start talking about some uh, uh, local networking wireless protocols next time. We'll start with Bluetooth if we have time for um, Wi-Fi will also talk about that. Any questions on this? Okay, we'll see you on Thursday.